Hey guys, and welcome back. So today during my lunch break, I've decided to clear out our coach's shed. Every few weeks it becomes a bit messy and I like to get all of the equipment out on court to have a proper sort through. So I'm gonna show you through all of the equipment we have and if you hang around to the end, I'll talk through my top three pieces of equipment that we used most often. So let's check it out. Welcome back. So if you're new to the channel, my name is Ashley Neves and I run the Tennis Mentor YouTube and Instagram accounts, giving tips and tricks to tennis players, tennis parents and tennis coaches to get more out of the sport. Like I said, in today's video, it's gonna be slightly different. We're gonna be looking at the equipment that we use on our program here at The Avenue. So let me know in the comments below if there's any equipment that you use that we don't have here or if there's any equipment that we're using that you haven't seen before. So first things first, like any coaching program, we need to make sure that we've got the right tennis balls for our sessions. We run coaching for tots from the age of three all the way through to adults at the age of 93. So a good selection of tennis balls is really important for any coaching program. So the tennis balls that we're currently using on the program are these red felt balls. Now you can get these from most tennis suppliers and these are great. We use them for our eight and under age groups. Um, we're an outdoor club. If we were indoors, we would also make use of foam or sponge tennis balls as well. Um, but these tend to hold up better in windy conditions. Um, for the next age group up, we use the low compression orange tennis ball, which our ones have this orange dot. Other versions of orange tennis balls have um, orange felt and yellow felt. So that's how you distinguish these. We use these balls for our nine and 10 year olds, um, but we also use them for cardio tennis as well as they bounce slightly lower and they travel slower, making it easier to hit the ball. And in cardio tennis, the focus is on movement and getting your heart rate up. So actually using these low compression balls increases the length of your rally, making for a tougher workout. We then go up to our green dot tennis balls. These are the final stage of our junior tennis program before we go up to the full compression tennis ball. Our current ball of choice is the Head Pro. We've um, been using this for a few months now and absolutely love it. It's great for all surfaces. We keep these all in the different baskets. We've got a couple of these baskets for our yellow balls. We've got one green ball basket. We've got an orange ball basket here as well as a bigger trolley load of orange balls. We tend to use these bigger trolleys for things like cardio tennis when we're doing lots of basket feeding drills. We also have another big trolley at the back for the uh, full compression balls, which again are great for basket feeds. But generally speaking, we tend to use these baskets. They're very portable to use around the court um, when you don't need hundreds of balls. I think they carry around 100, so they're a pretty good size for most sessions and most of your needs. So next up on our list, outside of tennis balls, is we actually have a lot of these kind of football sized balls or balls that are kind of in between a tennis ball and a football. And these are great for the junior players for their hand-eye coordination, for their receiving and sending skills. So we do a lot of throwing and catching with these balls and these slightly smaller balls here, you can actually hit with the racket as they're a bit lighter. So for tots, younger children who find it difficult to track the oncoming ball, these can give the children a bit more success and get them feeling what they need to be doing with the ball as opposed to missing the ball all the time and losing interest. But we also use them for the older children as well for various things like developing a unit turn. Obviously for the older, stronger players, you could even upgrade to a medicine ball for that sort of thing. Normally in a session, we tend to have one ball between two as lots of the work using these balls can be done in teams. So you don't need to think about having one for every single player. So the next piece of kit that in my opinion is one of the most important pieces of kit that coaches can have are very simple and it's throw down spots and we also have throw down lines which very simply we use them to mark out parts of the court whether it be where we want the players to be standing we could use them to section off parts of court for targets with the younger children we use them to create a border of a smaller court as opposed to hitting into the big spaces so they're very very versatile so the next thing that we have in our shed works for a similar sort of purpose to the throw down lines and the spots and it's a selection of hoops now we have loads of these we have big hoops like this big blue one we have smaller hoops like this and we also have 
hexa hoops. Now, these hoops are great, again, for using as targets. So you can place them into a hitting zone and, and players have to try to hit their shots into the hoops. Alternatively, we've been using them quite a lot since COVID and the new restrictions in segregating certain areas for the players to put down their drinks at the start of the session. So these come in really, really handy. Another fun way that you can use hoops with children is to develop tracking skills by trying to get them to send the ball through the hoop. So it may be that two players are rallying over the net and player number three has to try to get the ball to travel through the hoop to score a point. Following on from different targets, we also use a selection of cones. So we've got some smaller cones like this style and some slightly bigger cones as well. They're great for targets, but also you can use them within obstacle courses for things like slalom runs where players have to zigzag in and out of the cones. And what I also love using them for, again, is developing players' tracking skills or receiving skills. With the younger children, we actually call them ice cream cones and we get players throwing balls over the net and they've got to try to catch the ice cream in the ice cream cone. I also love these for practicing serving skills and ball toss skills. We call this game Statue of Liberty and your aim is to see if you can set up for your serve, throw the ball up and catch the ball like so in your ice cream cone. Along similar lines to catching with cones, we also have these catching nets. So basically a very small hoop with a net in as well. These are perfect for tots and younger children for their tracking skills. They can try to follow the ball and catch it in their catching net. They can even practice their forehand swing whilst catching the ball. It could be volleys, it could be serves, but a great way to get younger children to watch the ball and to track it with their movement. It's also an exciting way to get them to pick up balls quicker. Each player gets one of these and they've got to see who can get the most in their catching net. So a really valuable asset, especially if you work with younger children. So slightly similar to the catching net, we have got our Mickey Mouse target, which effectively is a catching net in the shape of a Mickey Mouse. And we tend to put this at the other end of the net and children have to aim their shots over the net and into Mickey Mouse's face. Um, if you look at this as well, it's actually got Velcro ears here. So the low compression felt balls actually stick to the ears um, and that's quite fun for the kids too. So you can use this for throwing, serving, forehands, backhands, but it's a really fun way to get kids thinking about targets. Next up, we have these plungers. Well, I call them a plunger. Um, I don't really know what they're called, but they are adjustable so you can move the height up and down. Um, I recently made a video on my Instagram account um, of this using it with a teenage player on their slice backhand but it's designed for tots and what you do is you place it on the floor with a tennis ball on top and you hit the tennis ball off of this. It's kind of a foam material flexible ball holder which can take a lot of impact. So as you can see here, the ball is static, allowing children to practice their swings without the need to track a bounce and the oncoming ball. So we get children using their hands to see if they can hit it over the net, but alternatively, you can put another ball there on there and see if they can use their racket too. So one of our most versatile pieces of kit is one of the most basic, and it's your standard cone. Now, these cones are amazing because not only can you use them for targets or to mark out certain areas on the court, we also use them as scoreboards for our younger players so that they can easily keep track of score. And what we do is we place the cones in a die and each time a player wins the point, they'll move their tennis ball up a cone. So one zero, they'll move it up to the next cone, two, etc., until they get to the end, whether that be first to seven or first to 10. So there'll be 10 cones lined up in that situation. And it's a race to see who can get their ball to the end the quickest. Alongside this, we also use them for sending and receiving skills. So they're great for catching an oncoming ball. So you'll hold the cones in your hands like so. And your aim is to see if you can catch the ball like this. This is helping children to track the height of a bounce, but also you can throw or pass the ball back and forth with another player. That could be over the net or just in a small space, but great for sending and receiving skills as well as the other things. And last but definitely not least is the agility ladder. So I've made a video on this, on different exercises that you can do for your tennis with the agility ladder. This is a tool that can be used for tots all the way through to adults, high performance athletes as well. Great for developing fast feet coordination and can make for a really good workout. We use these a lot in cardio tennis as an obstacle for players to go through after they've hit their shots in the basket drills. So after packing everything away, all my camera equipment, I found some of the uh, pieces of equipment that I wanted to show you but I forgot so 
bean bags are great for tots because they can throw and catch without the bean bag bouncing away from them. So these are a great tool. You can catch them on your racket strings. You can do all sorts. You can throw them over arm for serve power, all those sorts of things. So bean bags are great. And finally, um, we have a bucket of rope. So this rope is perfect for working with adults and older juniors and even younger juniors on working on height over the net. So what we tend to do is we tie the rope on to a floodlight across the net to another floodlight to increase the height of the net so that players can work on hitting their balls higher over the net if they're defending or rallying and lower over the net if they're attacking. So another good tool is having some rope um, and you can be creative with that as well. So. As promised, I'm going to go through my three most important pieces of kit. So if I only had three pieces of kit in my equipment shed, what would they be? My first will be throw down lines. My second piece of kit will be the cones. And finally, it's an obvious one, but tennis balls. Not just the fact that we need tennis balls, but making sure you've got the right ball for the right group. Whether that be a hard tennis ball for adults or more experienced junior players, or a low compression ball for juniors, or even using a football for tots so that they can send and receive the ball with success. But making sure you've got the right ball for your group is vital. Don't be afraid to mix and match with tennis balls as well. I often get my older junior players going back onto red ball to practice their soft touch and their angles. And like I said, I even use the orange balls for adults when doing things like cardio tennis. As a coach, it's our job to find the best way to get as much as possible out of our players. So making sure that we set the challenge level appropriately. We don't want it to be too tough, but equally we don't want it to be too easy. And as well, it needs to be engaging and fun. So there you go. Let me know if there's any equipment that we're missing in our shed that you think we should get hold of. Or if you saw anything in that video which you're interested in, let me know in the comments below and I may think about making a more detailed video on that item. I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, consider subscribing and I can't wait to see you next time. Take care.